Grace and peace to you all from God our Creator and the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good morning. Beyond yeah, Beverly here at First Christian Church, I'd like to welcome you today. It is January 24th of 2021. Right before our call of worship, I'd like to should I say one thing just as we're getting to know each other. This last week, we didn't have a mic right at the level it should be. And one of the best things happened to me, one of the things that shows how great this church is, we had folks come in who, who just wanted to check in, who said, I don't know if other people are dealing with this, but I have this issue, I couldn't hear too well, can you see about it? And that is the exact right answer. See, oftentimes churches, uh, the pastor hears about it after it's already gone to the parking lot. <laughs> and the issue is when things go to the parking lot, I can't do anything about it. And so it was the exact right answer to come, not not angry, not mean, but just hoping to see the church at its best. So any time, I want you all to know that's the exact thing to do. That was excellent. But with that, would you all join me in the call of worship? Come to rejoice together. God is present with us. Sing praises to God, all people of faith. We are restored to life, morning after morning. We exalt our Lord who lifts us up. Come to enter the race for an imperishable goal. Proclaim the joy of serving alongside all of God's people. so long ago. 
go. But you are a God who loves, who forgives, who calls us forward, who always finds new ways. And we ask that even as we seek you, we would also model you. We would not be content to hold the gifts that you give to us, the ways you've grown us, the graces you've put in our lives. We would not hold on to them so tightly and not share them, but instead that you would see to it that all gifts you give are meant to share. That every joy is doubled when sharing them. Every, every burden is halved through sharing them together as your church. That in all the ways you have performed something new, whether it be this election or the call of a new minister here, the hopeful tail end of the virus, so much more, we ask that you would make these next steps one that we take together with trust, with a wholeness, with life and love through what we share. Not what we hold on to, but what we share, Lord. Allow us to share all of ourselves this morning with one another as we worship, as we pray. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every 
win their doctrine by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into Him who is the head, into Christ. This is the Word of God for the people of God.
we'll see from our scripture reading the basic definition and then we'll look and see why the church is formed by the Holy Spirit and then how we can get in line with what the Holy Spirit's already doing on our end of things. Truly, I see in this church, I see we're doing a lot of those things already. We're on it. But there's a need to, to pivot a few last things to really reach the next generation of Christians. And so we'll be ramping up on that. But first, before we get into all that, it's important that we see the connection that Ephesians draws here between Jesus and the church. If you recall, last week, the focus of the sermon was on God being revealed through Jesus Christ. That while God is mysterious, God has provided a means that we may know Him. His own Son, Jesus Christ, given to us in perfect time. And the goal of Christianity, then, is to see the revelation of who God is. To see the fullness of God in Jesus Christ, and to unite with Him in faith. For us, literally, to become Christ-like. To continue to be growing in our embrace and our walk with Him. But here's the issue. In case no one's ever told you, being Christ-like is not easy. You know, I know plenty of people who are like Christ in some ways. I see Christ at work in many people, much of the time. But I have never seen someone who is altogether perfect, like Jesus is. I have never seen someone who is altogether whole, like Jesus is. You know, as Jesus, he, he forgives people on his best days. Then on the cross, he does the same thing, he forgives people. Every situation, he's perfect, he's whole. Me, I'm not there yet. And so, we're caught in this catch-22. See, it, it's our need, it's our task, it's what the world really requires of the church, that we would be Christ-like. Yet that's an impossible task. None of us can fully model Jesus Christ in all our ways, all the time. We have to do it, and we can't do it. And so here's where the church comes in. The church exists because God calls on us individually, but God does not call on us to live out our faith individually. God calls on us individually, but does not call us to live out our faith individually. God will individually call each Christian to his son, to faithful obedience. But he calls them in special ways. He calls people from different walks of life, different situations, different gifts. And they're all meant to join together, to be one, to model his son Jesus. So what the church is functionally is not, not a building, but a people. It's a people that joins together to uplift Jesus Christ. A group of people who can model Jesus Christ in one way, and then someone else who can model Jesus Christ in another way, in another way, and soon, over time, it starts to build up to the whole thing, where a church can't replace Jesus, but it can effectively model Jesus better than any of us could on our own. In a sense, the church, people should be able to drive by and see, that's where a friendly neighborhood Jesus is. That's where people gather together as one body, as one people. They make Jesus Christ known. They model His ways. In fact, that's why in Ephesians, it calls the church the body of Christ. If you think about that definition, the body of Christ, the body, the thing that does the work of Christ, of Jesus Christ, we are meant to be one body, one people who are all uniquely called, who are called together in harmony, be one body, to be one body operating together in His image, to love, to serve, to grow people. So that's the definition, that's the first basic thing for us to see this morning. The church is a people. We are the body of Christ, we are God's means, the root of the Holy Spirit, to make His own Son known to this world. And the second thing we're called to see then is that how the church operates from God's perspective. What we see here is church membership, church participation, us coming together on Sundays. That is something we do, but truly that is an act of the Holy Spirit. See, oftentimes we only talk about the, the big controversial stuff of the Holy Spirit. You know, speaking in tongues and miracles, faith healings, 
all that. But the Bible, it routinely, routinely talks about the Holy Spirit and uplifts the more subtle ones He does. Drawing us together, calling us to be a church body, calling us to be one people in unity who make His Son known. Have you wondered why you're still coming to church in the middle of a pandemic? Has that just been you? That's been the Holy Spirit continuing to nudge on you, call on you. He often does work in these more subtle means over the course of the years. The Holy Spirit, He's the one who, who grows you in maturity, as it says here in Ephesians. Who's been the one who's been growing you in faith over time? It hasn't been my sermons. It may have been Ellis's sermons, but not mine. The Holy Spirit, He is the one who applies what God is doing onto your life itself, and it's often subtle, it's often over the course of many, many years. Many of His greatest works are these subtle things He does, calling us together as one body, growing us over the course of years to look like Jesus Christ more and more. And more specifically, one of His great works is to call together the church. The Holy Spirit belongs to call together the church. Because the Holy Spirit, His work, we must understand this, His Holy, the Holy Spirit's work since the beginning is mysterious, but it's, it's another one that's not a free-for-all. The Holy Spirit loves, loves to make Jesus known. We learn in places like John 16, 13, that the Holy Spirit, He is, he is definitely the most mysterious person of the Trinity. We know a good amount about God the Father. We know a great amount about Christ the Son. The Holy Spirit, John 16, 13 says, He doesn't attest to Himself. He's not in the game to make himself known, to promote himself. He, his goal is to attest to Jesus, to collect people and hand them off to Jesus Christ, to faithful obedience in him. And so the Holy Spirit, he's, he's mysterious, but he's always calling people, not necessarily in a mysterious way, he's calling people to look and to act more like Jesus. So the church from God's perspective, is the Holy Spirit, and He's gathering together all these people from different walks, from different places, not on accident, but on purpose. Many different people who could come together, who could make Christ known, each in their own specific way, but needing that unity together. Because we can't make Christ fully known on our own. I can't do it solely through preaching. You all can't do it solely through serving. All of our gifts must coalesce in one thing. Because Jesus, he's too massive, he's too great for one person to get after it. And so what we should consider when we see that the church truly is a calling from the Holy Spirit, is that first of all, many of his greatest works, many of the things the Holy Spirit does most often, are not fantastic, they're subtle. Subtle, they're things that he sticks with you and continues to do over time. And the thing we should consider is that the Spirit is much more active than we often give him credit for. That's why, by the way, we stay in prayer as disciples. Why we continue to uplift what God is doing over what we're doing. But at the same time, we should see a danger with that should see a danger with the understanding that the Holy Spirit often works in subtle ways. This is the mysterious person of the Trinity, and he's working in subtle ways over the course of years. There's a lot of room to get it wrong. I know we've all experienced or heard or heard of somebody who's getting a little loose with how they're talking about the Holy Spirit. They start to say, God told me. God didn't tell me that same thing. They start to say, send me 995 and you will be healed. <laughs> we have to be careful. When people start talking about the Holy Spirit a little too loosely, there's some danger there. And the danger is that he is mysterious and he often works in subtle means. And so we could fall into two camps. We could reject the work of the Spirit entirely. We could say, well, there's too many pitfalls in there. Let's just forget all about it. Or we could jump in and we could actually see how he often works. 
And so what we see when we actually jump in and we see how we often works is we see this issue that comes up again and again. See, in addition to all the faith healing and all the people saying God told me and then saying something that God at least never said in the Bible, there's a more subtle, there's another issue that I think we should have our attention called to this morning. And this is, this is one that I see people talk about with the Holy Spirit. And it starts out good natured, but I think it's the real pitfall that many people are falling into in this next generation that's really giving people the wrong idea about the church, keeping people out of the church, in fact. You may know some of the conversation. It's this conversation of, do you go to church or are you the church? Are we called to go to church or to be the church? This is often a misunderstanding of how the Holy Spirit works. See, first, the first misunderstanding with how the Holy Spirit works is the idea of, well, we'll just go to church. And what that does is, that makes church the work of the Holy Spirit, God calling together a body, a people to model His Son into an attraction. Some nice songs and a good sermon to hear, and then you go home and forget about it by Monday. That's such an empty view of how God's operating. It's acting as though God only has the ability to work within these walls. God only has the ability to do something if I say so. That's not how it works. And so many people, they've switched over to, we must be the church. And that one's a little closer because what that shows us is that our calling, it's not to sit together in the pews. Our calling is to follow the work of the Holy Spirit. Our calling is in any situation where there could be love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. When that could break in, that's church. But here's the issue with that. We oftentimes leave it just there. We say, go be the church. And a lot of young folks, they're taking that seriously. You know, it's, they're not here. They're out being the church. And so I want to posit to you this morning that that too is a misunderstanding of the Holy Spirit's work. I want to posit to you that we are called both to go to church and to be the church. And right? we can know clearly the issue with just going to church without being the church. It's dangerous. It's empty. But what we need to, to really see is just being the church without going to church is just as dangerous. Right? Because that's becoming more and more popular lately. So a recent statistic about 72%, that's about three-fourths, 72% of people who mark none on their religion, believe in God. They really like Jesus. They just believe they are the church. They don't have to go to church. And I suppose that's fine on its own, but then you, you check in with those folks and what do you see? See, folks who start out and it's good nature, they want to go out, they want to be the church, they want to find God in small, subtle ways, which is excellent. And then they get stuck. They have no one around them who, who can challenge them, who can be Christ-like in a way that they aren't, who can cause them to grow and express their faith in more mature ways than they did before. And so they're lonely and they're, they're stuck and they're not doing anything. Then the second issue is oftentimes with this idea of I'm going to go be the church, the assumption is, well, God just wants me to feel good. God just wants me to go sit on a mountainside and say, wow. That's not the extent of God's will. God cares much more about people who can come together, who can actually model Jesus Christ, who can serve in effective ways. And that's only able to happen whenever we come together. We can do much more as one body than we could as a bunch of individuals, see? And so this mentality of, well, I'm off to go be the church, first of all, you're going to get stuck, and you're not going to have people to check in with, and second of all, you're going to convince yourself that all God wants you to do is to feel good. The Bible is so much deeper, so much richer than that. 
Christianity has so much more to offer than just feeling good. So see, going to church has to come right alongside being the church. The work of the Holy Spirit most often in a Christian's life, the subtle work he does over the course of years, is this ebb and flow pattern. He calls us together to be one body, to grow with each other, to check in, have that community that we have. That we would challenge each other, we would see to it that we grow, and then we would be sent out, we would be the church. But each week, this would not be a one-stop shop, this would be a distribution center, where we could get refilled and then we could go back out, we could be the church. And we could come back together, get filled up, be with other people who challenge us, who love us, who help us. The calling to, to go to church and to be the church, it's, it's kind of like this. When I was young, a, a teenager, I tried to get really good at guitar. Now, I'm still not very good, but I like it. Um, and what I did is I made a classic mistake. I tried to teach myself guitar. And that's not a good move, because I didn't know how to play guitar. Why would I go to me for lessons? <laughs> and so what I did, I sat down in front of uh, Stairway to Heaven, the Led Zeppelin song, put it on repeat, and tried to play it back. What I found out very quickly is I was not good. I found out I could kind of play a few notes in the solo, and that's about it. Usually, that song is just too big. You know, and it's varied. There's the acoustic sort of picking in the intro, there's this bluesy rhythm work, and then the solo is like, like five minutes long. And no one wanted to hear, you know, my best attempt, they wanted to hear Stairway to Heaven. And so what I had to do, my own growth process, was a matter of getting good at the part I could get good at. And it wasn't until years later I got together with other folks who were kind of good at guitar, and they were kind of good at the parts I wasn't good at, and together we made it work. I wouldn't suggest it, I'd, I'd play the original, not our cover, but it was pretty close. We were getting close. You see, that is the way the Holy Spirit calls on us. We are called to our own growth process, our own way of modeling Jesus Christ, and to work on that and to grow in Him over the course of years. But that won't cover it. He's too great. He's too massive for any one of us to cover. And so what the Holy Spirit does is He then draws us together, calls us to be one people. One people. That I might be able to just play the solo kind of well. Another person could do pretty good the acoustic part, and another, the bluesy rhythm, and together we can make it actually look something like a song. So Ephesians 4 here, it goes on and it says, this is the work of the Spirit, that He has apportioned to us these various gifts, that we are not all meant to be one thing, and it gives us some names of the, the different roles, the different ways that the Holy Spirit will call us into new life in Christ, and it gives us five, it gives us five, the apostles, the prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. We won't get too caught up on trying to define those or say, you're exactly this one. Because these are more guideposts than they are um, five distinct boxes. And since you can be pastoral and preach, you, know, you can be an evangelist, share the good news, and you can be an apostle, someone who builds something up. We aren't caught to just one of these, but this does this does show us something. This shows us that on purpose, the Holy Spirit does call us into these various roles. The Holy Spirit is not interested in molding everyone into the exact same thing. Whenever the Holy Spirit calls us to grow us in Christ, calls us to grow into these different offices, these different roles, these different unique people. But that's on purpose. And that's what I really want us to grapple with this week, that there's this joyful admission the joyful admission here in Ephesians that we're not all one thing. Because through the power of the Holy Spirit, we're able to come together. That our differences add up. They're on purpose. Can you imagine what a church would be like if you just had teachers? If you just had preachers? A church would get nothing done. And it's important that we look at that, that there are these various roles because let's say, hypothetically, next week we had a flood of new people come in. And there are some of those people who, who love God, but they just they don't know about the church. 
they're giving it one last shot. They're checking it out just to see one last time. We have to know, are we ready for them? But are we going to allow them to be in the church and to go to church with us? How are we going to see people who are different in their walk with Christ? Who are on the path, but their path looks different than ours. Maybe they're a people person, or maybe they're a great teacher. We look at them and, and treat them with judgment. They aren't like me. They must be wrong. We look at them and treat them with apathy. And I guess they can sit in the pews back there, but we are the church. Do we treat them with curiosity? We say, this is a different way of being in the church, and I don't quite get it. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe their difference is something that I should reach out for, that I should ponder. How is God using me and them? How is the Holy Spirit calling us to work together in this? How is it that God may be doing something bigger than either of us through using both of us? What we're called to see here in Ephesians is that there are groups, there are types of folks who aren't like what we're used to seeing, and that's a good thing. Whether it's a different walk of life, or different gifts, or a different age group, it's better with more people unlike us. Maybe a different type of ministry. A whole lot of people who come in, they're prophetic, they're able to state uncomfortable truths. That'd be a great thing. That's the basic idea of this scripture. Acknowledge that you do have a place in this church. That you were called here on purpose. The Holy Spirit, He calls us together. And His goal is that when we're called together, He will grow us in our gifts, in our likeness to Christ. That each of us here has an office that we hold. We have something unique to our walk with Christ that has the whole picture. The Holy Spirit does not call people together and then not use them. But then to acknowledge that there is others. There's people who aren't like us, who aren't here yet, who have gifts, and they're real gifts. They're just as much the church as we are the church. And to allow them in, to allow them to be the church and to go to church with us, that whenever they come in, they aren't, you know, junior varsity and we're the real church. But together we're one body of Christ. What we see is the church is one body of Christ formed together by the Holy Spirit on purpose because we're meant to showcase Christ's love to the world. And we're always at our best whenever we gather together when we share the gifts we have and we appreciate the differences we have. We see that's actually a good thing because the Holy Spirit, He did this on purpose. And there are so many ways this church is doing it already, but let's commit again this morning to be in the church that says yes to whatever the Spirit brings our way.
the service now when we usually take up our offerings and have communion. Uh, in this COVID situation, we're uh, taking the offering on the plates, uh, either as you come in or out of the service in the narthex. But let me remind us that, that the offering is definitely one of the things that we can all do despite our different gifts that we can bring in terms of our own uh, abilities, we all participate in supporting the work of the church, which is very important. But it's the time of communion for me that is the, the central part of the worship service. In Christian Church Disciples of Christ, we always have communion every Sunday. And to me, this is the time that we come together and in this most holy act, we, we, are, we become one in the Spirit with each other. And I think back to uh, watching Star Trek when I was, a, when I was a kid, and Mr. Spock introduced me to a Vulcan philosophy called infinite diversity and infinite combinations. And the idea behind that is diverse folks, in his case from all over the universe, in our case at least from all over our community, can come together and bring their individual individuality and their individual gifts together. And yet we can be one together through this holy act of communion that connects us together with God. Let's pray. God, our Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together with you and worship. Please bless this sacramental meal that it can reconnect us to each other and with you. Please help us to receive the Holy Spirit to strengthen us and carry us forward so that we may be the body and blood of Christ on earth and truly be his church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The table of the Lord is prepared. Let us prepare our hearts. All are welcome.
Spirit's connection between one another as we all listen to the Lord Jesus Christ. The way that he would sit there with Peter and with Matthew and with so many. Each week it would extend out and it would include us. It would include people who aren't even at the table yet. But they would all join together in one spirit, harmony, responding to the night when Jesus was betrayed. For it was on that night that you lifted up the bread, gave thanks for it, who blessed it, broke it, said, This is my body, which is given for you. Take of all of you, eat of it, and do so in remembrance of me. In a similar way, we you know he took the cup out of supper, he lifted it up, thanked God for it, he blessed it. He said, This cup is a new covenant, sealed in my blood. Forgiveness of sin of many people. Take it, all of drink it, and do so in remembrance of me. Amen. Can you please rise for the invitation to the side show? Church, one of the greatest gifts we have is in our ability to share what God's doing in our lives. So as we turn to the invitation to discipleship, know that church membership, church participation, us coming together on Sundays, it's not about where you sit in the pews, it's not about which church counts you, it's about a willingness to let the Holy Spirit connect you with others, to share your life fully, knowing that we are better together than we are individually. With that said, if anyone feels called to profess for the first time that Jesus Christ is the Lord, He is the Son of the living God, or if they would like to join First Christian Church in the right hand of Christian Fellowship, please come forward now. With that, receive now this benediction. May God the Father prepare your journey. Jesus the Son, guide your footsteps. The Spirit of life, strengthen your body. The three in one watch over you on every road that you follow. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.